Welcome back, everyone. It's Stray Faye here with another episode of I, the Somnium Files. In the last episode, we took in Iris to the station to question her about the events surrounding Renju's death. Uh, she turned out to be quite a suspicious person. Um, so we decided to delve into her Somnium, and we have. Like we have- we learned a lot, but I feel like this just poses more questions than answers. Uh, for some reason, inside Iris' Somnium, uh, she has recollections of the original Cyclops killings, which wouldn't make sense that she did them? I don't think she did them. I feel like she might have watched them be- because, I don't know, she's 18, like, what would she be, like, 12? She had to be, like, Mizuki's age to, like, do all that. And, yeah, now we're just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Alright, let's take a look around. You can see the sink machine through the window. Iris is in the sink subject chair. She's still waking up. Uh, the monitor. Different strings of characters and numbers continue to scroll on the monitor. Is I'll take a look at boss later. Have a chair, a chair. You look at the keyboard. Binder, a binder. It's a sync manual. They're all over the place. Uh, monitor off. The monitor's turned off. Mm, locker, <clears throat> a locker. What the? Hey, did you hear something just now? Hmm? It must be in your head. <laughs> why is- why was that so sinister? A locker in the corner. I'm sure there's nothing in there. And the entrance. Uh, I have a CRT monitor. CRT monitor. Date, can you turn on the TV? Video drone is about to start. Video drone? What's video drone? You haven't seen video drone? It's a cult classic. I haven't seen it, and that's not a TV anyway. Uh, a CRT monitor. Steel shelf, I opened it up. There's a bunch of Marimos inside. Are we gonna learn what a Marimo is? Is it like the Kotek? Not the Koteka. <laughs> There's a metal shelf by the wall. Uh, computer, you are messed up. A uh, door. The door leads to the sink room. I probably want to talk to Peter and boss. Uh, take a look at him. Peter looks like his usual self. How? Well, let me ask the obvious question. Why did the original Cyclops killer appear in Iris' Somnium? The sinker does not always experience the Somnium they expect. Dreams are pieced together from memories even repressed subconscious ones. When using the sync machine for an investigation, we don't always see the memories we expect to see. True, oftentimes a subject will subconsciously want to express their dark secrets and repressed memories. That is why we see them so often in Somnia. Yeah, they're, all, they're always thinking about it. I'm surprised we didn't see anything about Renju. Like, yeah, like... Like, oh, we're gonna- we're gonna see something, like, involving the events of Ranger. Nope! Nope! See, see the other murder victims! And why those Somnia are so useful for criminal investigations. But, this is not a guarantee. We cannot control the content of our dreams, after all. Alright, uh... What about the original Cyclops killer? Remember what the boss said this morning. The original Cyclops killer has yet to be brought to justice. After the investigation got going, it was taken over by the government and classified. That was the last we heard anything about it. Of course, they paid lip service to the idea that the investigation was ongoing. But in reality, it was dropped completely. Oh man, no justice for those women's families. That's scummy. 
Uh, well, I guess I'll ask about the like why the original Cyclops killer appeared in Irish Insomnium. It's like I told you before. Dreams are pieced together from memories, even repressed subconscious ones. This can be expressed as an equation. Dream D equals memory A plus memory B plus memory C. This, of course, means that Dream D is a fictional event. However, the same cannot necessarily be said about memory A, B, and C. Just a... like a collage, like... an amalgamation of memories. Those happened in reality. In other words, fiction is built from combinations of reality. So what I saw in Somnium earlier... Yes, I believe Iris actually witnessed those events. Uh, let's see, let me ask about the red figure from the sink. In the Somnium earlier, I saw someone else who might be the criminal. Who was he? I wouldn't know. Are we sure it's a man? I mean, he does kind of look like a man. <laughs> Got the same stocky build. Uh, about the original and new incidents. I don't believe there's any meaningful connection. Between the original and new Cyclops serial killings, I mean. Are you sure about that? Why is that? The culprit is not the same. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. How can you be so sure? Because I can. Don't worry about it. Just trust me. Mm, okay. Are all the memories real? Pewter, you said that memories happen in reality, right? But what about false memories? How do we know if the memory really happened? Even false memories are built from the pieces of real ones. If you disassemble those pieces, you will find real events. What about things you see in movies or television? The events might be fictional, but the experience is not. Our imaginations are limited to what we have seen. We cannot invent something whole cloth. Okay, well that's it from Pewter. Uh, it doesn't look like- can I look at Iris? No. <laughs> it's like, I know she's there behind the boss, but can't really look at her. Alright, let's talk to boss. Or look at her. Boss has a serious look on her face. Uh... So why did the original Cyclops killer appear in Iris' insomnium? You can't dream of something you know nothing about. That means Iris must know about the killings. Six years ago, Iris was 12. Did she witness the crime at age 12? And not just one, but all four? Hmm. Okay. What about the original Cyclops serial killer killings? The Cyclops killer appeared six years ago. I lost my memory six years ago. There has to be some kind of connection. There isn't. It's a coincidence. Really? Are you sure? I'm missing an eye. The other victims also were missing eyes. Really? Alright, about the original Cyclops serial killings, dot dot dot. Didn't I tell you? The entire case is a state secret. No matter how many times you ask, I won't tell you anything. Alright, about the blue figure from the sink. Help me understand this. What I saw during the sink earlier, that was the scene of the original Cyclops serial killings, right? Yeah. So the person doing the killing was the original Cyclops killer. Right. Did you see him? He was... I saw... your face. The original Cyclops killer was... It can't be. 
It's impossible. Date, you cannot say that for certain. You have no memories past six years ago. That is true. So perhaps, Mr. Date, you are the killer. Uh, was was that supposed to be foreshadowing? Would Peter say that? One said that? Wasn't he wasn't just joking around? <laughs> You're missing your left eye. So you steal them from others. Everyone's really quiet now. What what's going on? I'm kidding. What you what? <laughs> You can't be the Cyclops killer. Why? Really? Of course not. Do you think I would hire a serial killer? I don't know, maybe you just didn't know my background. Maybe I hit it really well. You interrogated Iris before the sink. What you saw in the Somnium was just a manifestation of the fear you put in her. Maybe. I said the serial. Okay, I guess summarize for me. I didn't learn anything from speaking with Boss and Pewter. If anything, the mystery only grew deeper. Pewter shook me from my thoughts. Dante, it looks like Iris is about to wake up. Got it. I headed to the sink room. Hey, Iris. About that dream earlier. Dream? What dream? There is no point in asking her, Date. The subject of a sink does not experience Somnium in the way that you do. They will not remember it. Then what about the Cyclops killer, from six years ago? Cyclops killer? I remember hearing it on the news. But I was just a little girl. I don't remember anything specific. You don't? No. What about the scene of the murder? I don't know. I've never been there. Hmm. Well, she looked... She averted her eyes. But... Dreams are pieced together from memories, even repressed subconscious ones. You can't dream of something you know nothing about. Date, could you take Iris home? Huh? We do not have enough evidence to hold her. Even insomnium, we couldn't find anything. But, I mean, maybe not about Ranger's murder, but what about if everything else we saw? The law demands that we release her. You cannot decline, Date. Okay, we're just letting her go. Date, could we make a stop first? Sure. Where? Marble. It's a bar in Golden Yokocho. Why would you want to go to Marble? You know about that place? Yeah. Mr. Okiura took me before. Why do you want to go there? There's something I want to talk about. We can't talk here? It might take a while. Hmm. What do you think? There's no reason to refuse. Besides, there's a lot I want to ask her, too. Alright, sure. Iris nodded and pulled out her phone. She's... She, is she sending a Nile message to someone? I was curious, but I didn't want to pry. 
Turned the wheel and drove to Marvel. No, oh, okay, we can't talk to her in the car. There we go. Alright, Marvel, Sunday, 9.41 p.m. When we walked in, I didn't see Mama anywhere. Oh, to my surprise, I saw Ota sitting at the counter. What? What are you doing here, Ota? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess you're 24, you can drink, but I don't... This doesn't look like a place Ota would go to regularly on his own. Tessa! Oh. Oh, Ota! Did Iris send Ota here? He did not look happy to see us. Um, let's take a look around the bar counter. Bottles on the counter. There are bottles lined up on the counter. There are bottles of alcohol on the shelf. The TV on the wall. Look at the bar from this perspective. Ooh, so many posters. There is a poster on the wall. Oh, there's nothing. N no movie on it. A flyer. Oh, the hanger. Hanger on the wall. The specials are written on the chalkboard. Sofa. Table in front of the sofa. Doesn't look like it's giving me any like quirky. Dialogue, a stool. Eh, maybe anything else over here? Just more hangers. Another menu. It's a menu. It has writing on the back. Beer tap. A beer tap. Nothing there. How about the fridge? Or refrigerator. There's music playing over the radio. Painting of St. Sebastian. And, okay, that's it. Alright, Ota, what are you doing here? The <laughs> Looks like he's bothered by something. I never thought I'd run into you here. I was niling with Tessa earlier. You were? She said she was going to Marble, so... I guess she was messaging Ota during the interrogation. I and got here car. just before you did. Look, I was really worried about her. She was about to be charged with a serious crime. Uh, uh, isn't your phone broken? No, this is my new one. You're thinking of the one I dropped in that puddle. Uh, where's, where's Mama? Oh, she left a little while ago. She said something about going to help an acquaintance. She told me to watch the place until she got back. Uh, <laughs> How well do you know Mama? Not at all. But <laughs> okay, this is dressing a complete stranger. Stranger, don't don't drink anything off the shelves, Mister. It's my first time here. Just serve himself a drink. I wasn't particularly surprised. Mama's always depended on the kindness of strangers ever since she opened Marvel. A little bit. Ooh, trusting. Looks like this piece bothered by something. Um, well, it's like this. <laughs> Let me talk to Iris before continue with Ota. No, I didn't tell him to come. Yes, you did. He just showed up on his own. <laughs> oh God. All right, that's Iris. You're lying. All right, what's that thing about? This actually works out nicely. I want to ask you something, Ota. It's about a Nile message you sent Iris. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about that thing. Oh, I can actually read it this time. They're accusing me of a lot of stuff. They're, they're gonna think I did it. It's okay, Tessa. Stay calm. I'm here for you. Okay. I won't tell anyone about that thing. Not even... Oh, I can't read that. Not even blah blah blah. <laughs> Don't worry. I promise to protect you. That you'd stay quiet no matter what. What were you talking about? Well, uh... I'll tell her about the two-witter thing. I swear I'll do it. 
So blackmailing him with that. Jeez, fine. Just don't tell anyone else, okay? But before I tell you, who's that? Wait, who's... Who's what? What? At the door. Someone's standing outside. Wait, no one's there. What the? What the fuck? Oh no, we short circuited Iva. Did we really get? Did we really die from the look over there trick? All right, day four Monday. I guess we just passed out for the night. What happened? Why did you do that? Okay, we're still on. We're still at Marble Monday, two forty-eight a.m. Uh, at least I'm not dead. When I woke up, I was lying on the sofa. Where am I? My head was killing me, and my memory was foggy. I felt a sudden pain in my neck. Oh, mom was back. I shot up, rubbing my neck. When I looked over to the counter, I saw a monster staring back at me. That's not a monster, this is mama. It took me a few seconds before I realized it was just mama. It looks like you're awake now. Uh, was she concerned that I was passed out on her floor? As mama spoke to me, it all came rushing back. I remembered everything. I can look everything at everything again. All right, uh, shelves. <laughs> there are bottles of alcohol on the shelf. There's a menu. Has writing on the back. Doesn't look like there's gonna be anything new. Bottles lined up on the counter. Beer tap. A TV on the wall. This is not gonna give me anything new compared to like the first time we came here. Poster, flyer, hanger. Kind of fishing for dialogue at this point. Specials written on the chalkboard. The sofa. The table. The other menu. Stool. Counter. Here's mama number two. A refrigerator. Music playing over the radio. <laughs> I do like the music that's in this place. It's a little <sighs> oddly sensual music. A painting of Saint Sebastian. And that's it. Alright, Mama, what the heck is going on? Mama is polishing the dried bonito. Uh what time is it? It'll be three o'clock soon. In the morning, of course. Uh why didn't you wake me up? I tried. You wouldn't budge. I mean I guess we were kinda like Electrocuted. We were tased. I thought you were passed out drunk, so I left you like that. Did you think I just came in here and just like chugged a bunch of bottles in here? But I didn't have a glass in front of me, right? So you weren't drunk? The, you sound sound so disappointed. Didn't have a single drop. Oh, I thought you were drinking straight out of the bottle. Just like the old days. Mm. All right, where's Ota? Ota? The boy I asked to watch the bar? I'd say he's too old to be called a boy, but yeah. A <laughs> 24-year-old boy. I mean... <laughs> I'm like 30 and I don't feel like a grown-up. He was already gone when I came back. All I saw was you getting your beauty sleep on the floor. <laughs> Damn it, Ota. What are you thinking? What? Why did you do that? To a police officer. It appears that he took off with Iris. I mean, was that his way of, like, protecting her? What were you doing during all this? My power was shut down due to the stun gun. I have rebooted in safe mode and am now operational.
Oh, phone call. Date, the boss is calling. I wonder how many messages I have on my phone. Uh, how am I gonna report this one? It says, yeah, I, I, I tried to take an 18-year-old girl to a bar and then I got tased and lost her. Sorry, boss. Date, listen. Mm. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. What's going on now? Just now, the killer... Well, just watch the video. I sent the address to Iba. <gasps> Wait. Iris. Wait. We just saw her. This is being live streamed? Live streamed video. No, that's. Wait. What's going on? We just saw her and she just ran off with Ota. I thought. Iba, the source. Identify. The Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. Okiura? Wait, is that associated with Renju? Renju Okiura? Date, focus. We need to get to the site, now. Yeah. I thanked Mama and ran out of marble. Oh god, What's lag. ETA? <clears throat> Our destination is far from here. <clears throat> 20 minutes is the fastest. Oh god. Please, please let me make it in time. Oh god. They wouldn't kill Iris, would they? Oh god, she already had her eye removed, but she's breathing. <sighs> that sick bastard. Oh. Wait. Are we gonna watch her get killed? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Shh. No. No, no, no. Tessa! Wait. Hold on. I'll save you. Ota's there. Ota. I kept my foot to the gas the whole time. I could feel the sweat on my palms. The engine raised a high-pitched scream, but I could barely hear it. My heartbeat was pounding in my ears, shaking me to the core. How much time had passed? The feeling of time itself had disappeared. Eventually, the car reached a long bridge. Shortly after, the image changed. Uh. No, it can't be. Uh. No. Stop. No. no! <gasps> oh my god. Too late. Was that was that real? That wasn't some sort of like stage prop, was it? 
Harbor Warehouse District, Monday, 3.35 a.m. The bodies are switched. <gasps> Ota. Next day, police headquarters, Monday, 10.02 a.m. Oh, go forward. There you are, finally. I was looking all over for you. I can't even digest what happened. It's rare to see you down like this. But it's understandable. You blame yourself for this, don't you? Beating yourself up about taking Iris to marble. And about letting Ota get the upper hand on you. Am I right? Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife, killed her, then killed himself. Oh, have to look at that again. How would he orchestrate all that? That's ridiculous. Ota would never kill Iris. I know he wanted to protect her. And how do you explain the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. The new Cyclops killer. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? Ugh, all right. Talking to the boss. The security camera. Oh, look at that. Security camera B. The pipe. There are pipes on the wall of the room. Other camera. This is a camera used to record the interrogation. Doesn't feel good to have the lens staring at you. Camera used for interrogation. Let's see the computer. It's a PC in the corner. Anything else to look at? Other than the boss? The, the room is reflected in the mirror. Nope, nothing else to look at. A desk in the middle of the room. Okay, let's talk to boss. The boss is sitting in front of me. Huh. <sighs> um... Let's talk about Ocha's behavior during the video. from Tessa! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was gonna kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? I mean, to make himself look like a hero, I guess. 
The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. I mean, but they weren't on the screen at the same time. We'd, we'd only see the polar bear outfit and then Ota. They weren't on the screen at the same time, though. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well, maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice cutting machine himself? I don't buy it. Ota. Let's see, Ota had no incentive to kill Renju. Maybe he was thinking like this. The reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it. Making the president, Renju, the ultimate bad guy in his mind. I mean, I guess a lot of idols in Japan... I mean, I guess a lot of idols anywhere. Uh, they can't even have, like, healthy relationships, because, like, as soon as... They get into a relationship with someone, like, their toxic fan base will, like, attack attack the person that they're dating. So, uh, that's why they, they recommend that they be signal, single or, or else keep it, like, hush-hush. Mizuki is Ota's close friend. Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? Yeah, it, it, uh, he doesn't seem like the type of guy. But a lot of... Oh, <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of these people don't seem like they have the incentive to do a lot of these things, but we we st we're still finding like weird things about them. Uh, what about the polar bear costume? The culprit was wearing a polar bear costume, probably to hide their identity. But if murder suicide was the plan, the costume served no purpose. Uh, all right, Ota also had no incentive to kill Shoko. Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. That's kind of frowned about. I, I mean, they were divorced. That's a stretch. They've been divorced for years. Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. There are some additional discrepancies. I analyzed the investigation report. Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. Was he already dead when he was on the table? Are you sure? I am. I told the boss what Iba found. Oh, I know that. Well? Ota could have stabbed himself. Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but when it didn't work, he went for the ice cutting machine. Then, shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. That's a, that's a lot of running. There would be a blood trail. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? That's some big stretches you're doing here, boss. Very stretchy here. Well, I wasn't being serious. I didn't think Ota was the culprit from the beginning. I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Tessa! Ota knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... Then, who is the culprit? I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Right. And he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. 
So let's focus on the three other victims. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. What connects these three? Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? Maybe, maybe not. But it's a good starting point. Uh, let's see. I guess they're suggesting who we should talk to is Ranger and Shoko's daughter, Mizuki. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. Shoko and Renju were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. If anything, she's probably next in line. Uh, I don't really see the other three being involved. Maybe Moma, but... Moma Kumakura? Renju and Shoko were connected to the Kumakuras. But there's no connection to Iris. Let's see. How about Iris? Iris's mother? Probably not. Hitomi and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates. And she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No. If anything, she was probably in the same boat as Mizuki. Probably on, like, the next in line to be attacked list. No matter what the circumstances were, it seems impossible to me. Poor you tell me. And there's Ota's mother, Mayumi. <clears throat> Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemna's Gate either. And since Renju is the president... Anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her. Yeah, and there's such a vague connection. You know, like, even Shoko's... <clears throat> Shoko's last name is different. Ota didn't even know that... Uh, Shoko was Renju's wife. And I don't see her killing Ota. And above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. Alright, then there's Congressman So Sejima. Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras. But again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. And then, I guess there's me. Are we, are we listing ourselves as, as a suspect? I know Renju and Shoko, and I'm connected to Iris, but I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. Now, now that I think about it, Shoko too. Oh god, he has to like doubt his own, his own mental state. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing, but I still have my memory of recent events. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. Uh, will they take testimony from an AI, though? I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss. Alright, we have a lot of places to go to. Um, obviously we can't... Can't go to all of them. Um, well, let's take a look at the scene of the crime. That's where all the all the interesting stuff is going to be happening. Let's go to the cold storage warehouse. All right, so just just a Monday, no time frame. I stepped into the cold storage warehouse. 
The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold. Temperature hadn't raised much at all. Cold air sunk to my skin. But the center of my body was burning hot. Ooh. Any inspectors here? Oh, we can't, we can't joke around with him. It's probably... He's probably not in the mood anymore. The inspector is doing his duties as usual. Any clues? Uh, no, nothing so far. Okay. Um, any progress? Let's see, let me ask, look at him. Police officer, any progress on the investigation? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Okay, shelves with boxes. Shelves packed with cardboard boxes. I don't see any clues here. Uh, that's anything. Let's look at the equipment. A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. Oh, they didn't take it with them? Hmm. Probably on the ice cutting machine. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. Alright, so there's no, like, receipt trail. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Okiura Fishery Co. LTD is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. Oh. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. I know, I'll choose this place? With a connection to a previous victim? Video camera and laptop used for, st for the stream. I right, can't look at it anymore. Uh, take a look at forklift this A. This forklift is old. It does not appear to be functional. It has not been moved in some time. A forklift. The tire and floor are covered with a layer of ice. Overhead crane. A hook is hanging from the ceiling crane. A uh, forklift B? A forklift. I don't see anything special about it. Uh, blood stain B. Is this Ota's blood? Let's see, cardboard box. There's a cardboard box on the floor. There's nothing in it. Let's see, there shelves. There are only a few items on the shelf. Is this warehouse not in use? There's nothing particularly suspicious. Another box. A wooden box on the shelf. It's empty. Uh, overhead crane. Anything here? Alright, blood stain A. Iris's and Ota's blood. Take a look at the workbench. Right here. Iris and Ota were. I am sure you are already aware of <laughs> Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived. About 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right, about that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound, or...? I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. Maybe Ota was trying to help Iris, jumping at the criminal. That led to a scuffle, and Ota ended up with a knife wound in his side. He lost all his power to fight back. He was forcibly put inside the costume, and then finally cut open by the ice-cutting machine. But why? Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Unknown. Uh, no. 
Iris and Ota's bodies are under autopsy. Their bodies aren't here anymore. Right here, Iris and Ota were. Alright, let's take a look at the ice cutting machine. Iris and Ota were sliced in two by this ice cutting machine. Iris and Ota. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. Ugh. Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. Alright. A nice cutting machine. Alright, there's nothing else. Oh, wait. Wow, oh, okay. Just to say that I'm heading out. <laughs> Alright, uh, I guess we have time to do maybe one more place if it's quick. I'm gonna head out. Let me know if you find anything. I let them know and left the warehouse. Oh, oh, we're outside. When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What? What is he doing here? He goes outside? He walked up to me while, uh, while I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little. Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? The boss was there. Huh. Wait, do you not want to say this in front of boss? Is she... I couldn't speak openly in front of her. So, I decided to meet you here. Alright. Let's hear it. Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? Hmm. In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura. The previous chairman of the Kumakuras. Oh, but we know he's dead. He died last year. What about the other one? They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Huh, okay. Well, let's look around before we talk to Pewter. Let's see. Hologram barrier. The water of Tokyo Bay. I can kind of see, like, <laughs> a weird lens eyeball thing in front of my face. Hey, guys. A police officer. Policeman one. A police officer. Barrier. Box. A wooden box. Stack containers. A crane. 
Nope, nothing of note. Let's see, warehouse is all in a line. Cold storage wa warehouse. Okira Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. Is that it? There's, 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 oh, there's oil drums here. There's an oil drum. Is, was that used with Renju's case? I think that's it. I think that's all we can look at in the background. Alright, let's, let's chat with Peter. Pewter, rather, not Peter. <laughs> Peter looks grimly serious. Uh, well, let's ask about Rohan, because we know a little bit about him. Eighteen years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. Ugh. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Why? Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have them, to make them his own. All right, he kind of had mental issues of his own. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. Okay, this is different from... Our new victims who had their eyes taken out while they were alive but of course Rohan wasn't isn't involved at this point because he's already dead but even being the head of a Yakuza gang there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge his deepest darkest desire went unfulfilled for years however he soon met his ideal partner the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. Alright, who's the murderous psychopath? He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Uh. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. So, murder. What was it? We can already guess. Murder. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. Oh, he got off on it. Uh, since he, yeah, he probably, he probably needed it at that point, though, because... The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. Okay, so he couldn't feel any happiness through love via oxytocin, so he had to find it through other means. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. He was young. That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. 
All right, why did the Cyclops case get classified? That... I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. Okay, if that's the case, why are they trying to cover it up? Alright, I uh, guess summarize for me. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Ooh, the person who's on... Who we got that phone call from? Number 89. I know who killed Shogun Adami. But he's still in prison, right? So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead, and the other is behind bars. Neither of them had the opportunity. Okay. Well. Should we go to our next location? Uh, or should maybe we should save that for the next episode. I wasn't expecting Peter to be outside. Talked for a while. Okay. Uh, let's see. We learned a little bit more about number 89, but I kind of want to meet him first before checking out his profile. Let's see, endorphins. Endogenous morphine released in the brain. Relieves pain, calms nerves, and creates a feeling of euphoria. Totally unrelated to dolphins. What? <laughs> Uh, dopamine. One of the neurotransmitters pres present in the central nervous system. Involved with pleasant feelings, motivation, and learning new information. And the posterior pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is part of the endocrine system that hangs on the lower part of the brain. Not to be confused with the anterior pituitary, prim primarily secretes oxytocin. Alright, peptide hormone. A hormone with a peptide bond. A peptide bond is a bond that occurs when a carboxyl group of a molecule, COOH, reacts with the amino group of another mo molecule, NH2, which generates water, H2O. Has nothing to do with energetic tides. Oh, <laughs> like pe peptide. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, that's it? Alright. Um, Alright, so we will continue investigating the other places in the next episode. This is getting... We're just getting crammed with so much information. So, we know who the original Cyclops killer is. Although we don't know his name. It's just number 89. But we know that he's locked up, so we couldn't have done the killings. So, who is the new one? <laughs> and it seems like every time we like suspect a person, they die. Like, oh, like Shoko Nodami is dead. Like, oh, it must, it might, it's probably Renju. He's like around the scene of the crime, and then Renju ends up dead. And I'm like, okay, uh, 
All right, now, now Iris is seen around Renju. So we take her in to investigate. And now Iris is dead. And this looks like Ocho's collateral damage. So, all right, a lot more to think about. Okay, we will continue this next time. I hope you guys are having a fun time with this, and I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, bye-bye.